Hi there, Coach Sage Kande of VO2 Max Productions here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about my training for my PR, one of my best flat road standard distance performances, uh, in my opinion, running a 104-32 half marathon, uh, and it, it happened a while ago. But I just want to break down some of the workouts going into that, the last few months, and the progression, because maybe you want to run a faster half marathon time. Now, I realize your goal might not exactly be a certain time like 104, uh, but I've done talks previously on cracking 10 or 145 in the half marathon or 130 in the half marathon or just general workouts. Uh, half marathon training tips. I have a whole playlist on here uh, that I've done over the, the years and years to kind of help you with that. And it is breaking it down with what we call aerobic based training. So a lot of longer workouts, longer quality workouts. We're not just going out the door every day and running a certain distance. You could do that to start, but when you get very specific with your training, you add in what we call quality workouts and speed, maybe a couple times a week. And we're doing things like three times 5K, uh, you might wanna scale that down to something like two times 5K uh, or two times 6K. And I'll show you some example workouts from my actual training log I kept uh, during this time. And, for, and to provide context, for some of you that don't know, uh, coming out of college, I went into a, a professional, well, a sponsored Olympic development, US Olympic development program that focused extensively just on half marathon mainly and marathon road running. And coming out of college, I was more of a 10K runner, uh, probably more of a 8K, 10K cross country runner. But then in track, I ran uh, the 10,000 meters an awful lot. And even before I joined this program, uh, it was called the Hanson's Brooks Distance Project, still going on now. Um, I had run a couple road marathons. Uh, so I did have some longer distance experience. I'd run some half marathons, marathons on the road. Uh, there's a picture of me in college in my first Olympic trials. Uh, that was actually in 2007. I'm getting old now. It was a long time ago. And uh, I was lucky enough to join this program and I actually wrote a memoir, wrote a book, shameless self-promotion business plug here, Running for the Hansons. Uh, it's not written very well. I'm, I'm not a good writer. I self-published it. Uh, but it was my experience at the time, very immature, probably just as immature now, but my experience at the time as well as training uh, in this group and kind of the lifestyle of living and breathing road running right after I graduated college and uh, training alongside with teammates like Olympian Brian Sell here on the cover. He made the Beijing Olympics, ran a 210 marathon, fourth at Boston, fourth at Chicago, uh, and uh, Desi Linden, uh, back then it was, uh, her name was Desi Davila, who got, uh, who won the Boston Marathon eventually and made the Olympics as well. When she was in the program, she got second at the Boston Marathon. So it was based in Michigan and a lot of the context of these training workouts, that's important because we were running in the winter in Michigan outside, much rougher winters than Boulder, I'd say on average, uh, in snow and ice. And that kind of slowed us down. And I wanna tell you about some of these workouts and how they train the system for me to maximize my performance in that half marathon. Now keep in mind, my pace uh, for the half marathon, 104.32, it's about 455 per mile pace, which I believe is about 305 per kilometer pace. That was the race pace uh, to run a 104.32 half marathon. And I had a lot of teammates that were right in front of me uh, in that race actually, and it was done at the New Orleans Rock and Roll uh, half marathon, perfectly flat course, slightly below sea level, I believe, uh, in the winter, perfect weather conditions. And uh, that was in February 13th of 2011. So a long time ago, but uh, the springboard, if we rewind back from that training, uh, and we're looking at the training log, and I'll pull up the exact what I wrote in my log, because I kept a just a PDF or a, a Word doc on my laptop and saved it over all these years. Uh, if we go back two months, over two months, uh, nine, ten weeks before that performance, we were actually coming off of, I was coming off of a lot of disappointments actually my first year in the program, running high mileage, uh, running not very well, not adjusting well. I was overtraining probably. I was running very high mileage even for me, 120 miles a week, which is about 200 kilometers per week for that whole first year a lot of times. And 
I did not run well in the half. I ran a 107.50 in my first half in the program, and the goal was always to run under 105. Uh, so I'd already disappointed the coaches, disappointed my teammates, disappointed myself, and uh, was really kind of second guessing, what, am I, what did I do after college graduation? Why am I running this program? I'm tired, I'm running slower than I did in college. Uh, things were not going well for an entire 12 months. But after that, we got into training for some cross country in the fall. And we did, uh, in the US, we have like club nationals, we call it. And it was a 10K. And I didn't run very well in that either. I was like 50th place, I think. Um, but, you know, I wasn't always the speediest 10K guy anyway. So uh, one of the slower guys on the team and kind of disappointed from that. But we'd already been building uh, some speed into the program, doing a lot of 10K racing. And that's kind of the takeaway here is working up from racing 10 kilometers to extending that speed or speed endurance, we say, to the full half marathon or 21 kilometers, right? Uh, and cross country is great at building strength as well. So I was lowering my mileage actually and running a more moderate type of volume or intensity in terms of weekly mileage. I was running a lot of like 90 miles uh, per week. So I'll put that in kilometers there, uh, 90 miles per week. And here we'll break down some of the workouts. So we ran, we ran US cross country. It was in Charlottesville, North Carolina that year, December 11th, 2010. So December, it's about two months before my half marathon. Didn't do very well there. Uh, went out hard. At, I noted that I went out hard in at 4.45 per, for the first mile and got smoked basically. Um, 88 miles that week. We were kind of disappointed uh, as a team, I think, after that performance. And so we started training really hard right after that. Um, and the next workout, and I remember this workout because we got some video footage of this one actually. It was on snow and ice. We were wearing training shoes, not even racing flats, uh, I believe. Back then it's, it was sponsored by Brooks Running. Uh, companies like Coco weren't even around back then. And we were running in like Brooks Adrenaline shoes just for traction, which are not the lightest uh, racing shoes. And we had two times four miles, so two times 6.4K uh, on the snowy ice path. And the whole team tried to stick together there. And it was like 10 degrees Fahrenheit out, super icy. And uh, we ran 20 minutes, 37 seconds, and then 20 minutes, 45 seconds uh, was what I ran with an eight minute mile recovery jog in between. So we had to run a mile in between. So that's like a 15 mile morning. So we're putting in big volume long threshold to almost VO2 max types of efforts. It was probably over a 90, 95% effort for me, uh, but very pretty long workout. That's 40 minutes, 41 minutes worth of quality. Um, and if, you know, again, with your own mileage and your own goals, you might want to scale that back to something like two times 5K or two times three miles, right? So usually we'd have two easy days in between where we'd just run steady mileage, conversational pace before our next high quality workout. I actually had three in between uh, from then on, but we'll fast forward a bit uh, to my next quality workout back in Michigan. And this one I'm really proud of. This is probably one of the best workouts I ever ran in my life. And I remember it being very hard. Uh, the Hanson brothers, Coach uh, Keith and Kevin, who the, the program's named after, uh, would surprise you sometimes. And so we had a workout on paper. This was the same workout, and this is on December 31st, uh, 2010. And the conditions were a bit better. It wasn't on snow and ice, but it was definitely cold. And I was training with my buddy, uh, Tim Young, who I think after the program ended up running like a 214, 213 marathon and maybe 103 and a half. Uh, he was always a little faster than me. And in this workout, he kind of pulled me along, which really helps when you have motivating teammates like that. But in this workout, two times four miles, uh, Keith and Kevin came out and they said, okay, we'll run the first one at five minute per mile pace. So 306, 307 per kilometer pace. We're gonna run the first four miles in 20 minutes flat. And I was like, okay, five minute mile pace. It's gonna be hard, but I, I think I could do it. We take a 730, we take an easy mile in between. We run 730 uh, for the next mile, 1600 meters. And, uh, but they don't tell us what, what the next, pace is going to be at for the next four miles. So we stop, maybe get a drink real quick. And the next one, they come out and they say, let's see what you got. <laughs> all out. Now, now we do an all out four miles. So you're already tired from doing that first four mile rep, 6.4K. Uh, and now, now we go for a negative split all out. And I ran 1935 uh, for four miles on the second one. And I distinctively remember being in a lot of pain the last two miles, the last uh, 3,200 meters. 
Uh, my buddy Tim's pulling away from me. He's 10 seconds in front of me. And uh, with the last mile to go, they're telling me I, I should crack 450 or 445. And I'm just thinking, there's no way I'm going to do that. And I tried as hard as I could and he sprinted. Uh, says I ran a 450 there. So very good workout. It gave me, started giving me confidence. Started giving me confidence. 80 miles for that week. Uh, and I, I noted that I ran 4,666 miles in 2010, and that my goal to run in 2011 was to run over 5,000 training miles. I never have run over 5,000 training miles, but 4,600 miles in a year is, is good volume for me. So I was coming off of that as well. Now we're into the new year. We're into the new year. We're about a little over a month, five weeks uh, before the race, and I'm still doing workouts like three times two miles, three times two miles, uh, way under 10 minutes, so under five minute mile pace, about at half marathon pace, which is very close. When you're running close to 60 minutes and a half marathon, that's actually very close to what we call lactate threshold or tempo run pace. For you, uh, if your paces are a little bit slower, it might even be closer to 10K pace intensity, but you wouldn't necessarily do that for a full two mile or a full three kilometer repeat, right? You might do it faster than your half marathon goal pace, but it might be in between half marathon goal pace and 10K uh, race pace or current race pace. And I think we were taking an easy half mile in between, but I noted that it was there was a cold wind out there on that day. Uh, as part of our tune-up, as part of our tune-up, we used to go to Disney World. Disney World in the state of Florida, not to be confused with Disneyland in California. And we'd escape the Michigan winters and go down to Florida to train because it doesn't snow down there usually uh, as much. And that day, it was early in the morning. We were in the Disney Half Marathon. We were going against some triathletes, I believe, a uh, couple Olympians in the triathlon, uh, Hunter Kemper and uh, Jared Schumacher back then. Uh, but my buddy Tim won, and I was right behind him in second place, and I ran a 105.50. And that was considered a kind of a slow course. We went out actually slower than our marathon the first mile because it was in the dark and there's little speed bumps and you're running through the park and it wasn't a lightning fast course. So to run 105.50 a month out from our goal race uh, was a really good confidence booster. And at the time, the goal was to crack 105 because that was uh, that would qualify you for the 2012 uh, U.S. Olympic trials. You could actually run a half marathon under 65 minutes and qualify. So that was always the goal. And to negative split that big confidence booster, 91 mile week uh, there. After that, we had a kind of a light week, still recovering, but we had to go back to Michigan and it snowed a lot and it was cold and snowy. And the next workout, uh, big quality workout on January 15th, 2011 is uh, four times two miles, so about four times 3.2K, and I put crappy conditions, snow and ice, wind, slippery, uh, wore the training shoes, heavier shoes for grip and traction basically, and we actually ran closer to, was more closer to marathon pace, but it was more of an all-out type of effort. So in retrospect, that kind of maybe saved our legs, right? We didn't need a whole lot of speed work necessarily faster than uh, our goal marathon pace, sub five minute mile pace, sub 307 per kilometer pace, but getting in the heart rate and getting uh, in that feeling of lactate and the pain of running fast, uh, or at least breathing hard and not getting injured was still a good training stimulus. So I didn't necessarily need that pace to be faster because it was on snow and ice. We just didn't need to pull a hamstring, right? Uh, and still in running 100 miles that week, 160 kilometers a week, just pretty good volume. Now, the difference in this training is that we weren't doing super hard long runs. I wasn't smashing 20 miles every other week uh, like we used to when we were doing full marathon training. So it was kind of like abbreviated 10K training, mix in workouts, but very focused on the half marathon. Uh, and that is important. Next workout, next quality workout. I remember this one distinctively as well. It was actually five times 1.5 miles. It's kind of a weird distance, but if you're using the US uh, Imperial system, you know, you check your mile split and then you got a half mile to go, which is about 800 meters. Uh, and I was averaging 454 per pace uh, for a mile and a half repeat and doing five of them. So pretty high volume at just at low 104 half marathon pace. 
and it was windy and there was a cold wind the snow was falling it says um, we had an 800 meter jog recovery in between each rep that we would do in about four minutes uh, for the the recovery and I got my splits there 16 miles for the morning um, yeah so that was that was a huge confidence booster and about three weeks before uh, the big race four weeks before so enough time to kick in and not make me too tired uh, finally we were doing other workouts like th three miles two miles one mile and running those also at sub five minute per mile pace sub 307 so all very close to that half marathon goal pace and uh, yeah eventually we kind of tapered a bit still running 101 miles uh, the basically almost two weeks before the race I don't know why I was running so much actually but seemed to work out well I I've never been one to taper a, a huge amount before a race in terms of the weekly mileage uh, because I kind of just feel flat if I taper my mileage off whereas if I back off on the intensity and the speed and don't do any hard long runs then my legs tend to feel fresher and I, I tend to race better at least uh, that's what I found over the years but we did a workout so right before the race, we actually got to go to Florida again, and that was great for heat acclimation and heat training because we didn't know if New Orleans was going to be kind of hot and humid, even though it was in February. So we're in Florida running on a fast loop, no snow, good footing. We did a workout. Uh, this was only like a week before the race. I even tried to hold back a bit uh, because I was a little worried about the amount of volume we were doing. But the workout was three miles, take a rest, then two miles, take a rest, then another three miles, take a rest, then one mile. And I ran the first three miles in 15 flat. We took a five minute rest. The next two miles, about 3.2K, went in uh, 9.49. Uh, and then I did another three miles and ran 14.50 for three miles. I'm starting to think maybe the course was a little short. Um, and then one more mile at about the same pace, 4.55 uh, for the end, 17 mile morning and really trying to taper and rest after that. Uh, I even had a note that my hamstrings were tight that week. Flew from Florida to New Orleans, did some strides, did an easy six miles, 10K the day before the race, rolled out on the race, got really lucky. It was pancake flat course, perfect conditions. I think it was about 40 degrees, no wind. It was early in the morning. And my teammates, as well as a couple international guys, took it out right in front of me and I just kind of drafted off behind them uh, they ended up gapping me. Uh, my buddy Tim finished in about 104.20, I believe. So he's about 10 seconds in front of me. And we were together through 10 miles, through 16K. And I just remember thinking, that's still my 10 mile PR flat out. Uh, you know, just run the last run the last 5K in under 15.30 and you're going to have an Olympic trials qualifier. And that's exactly uh, what happened. And it was really a great... Uh, motivational thing great celebration you can see went out to bourbon street afterwards uh from my buddy tim because he had pulled me along in all these workouts and he had been there uh through the whole training block and even the year before we were training for the chicago marathon he got 16th place at chicago i got 17th place at chicago he had missed the olympic trial standard at chicago in the full by one second it was kind of a hot day he ran really well but he ran 219.01 at chicago the year before and we were like kind of almost crying for him because he missed the olympic trial standard by one second then we smashed it in the half marathon uh and it was really rewarding to do that with a teammate pulling you along uh but that's just kind of the context of training and and what uh we went through in that process again running in this this uh program and kind of my road running days with that road running focus and uh maybe you could see some similarities in your own half marathon journey if you're trying to maximize your time Definitely helps to have fast teammates, uh, motivation like that. Definitely helps to do a lot of pace work and to be coming off 10K racing, uh, cross country, track and road, uh, and moving up into that half marathon realm. But then also coming back down from having that marathon strength and doing those longer endurance-based workouts uh, could really give you more bang for your buck. But you can check out that playlist, Training for Half Marathon, whatever your goal is. Maybe it's to finish your first half marathon or crack two hours or something like that. Uh, I give you some sample workouts there and you could see kind of the similarities between uh, how that changed my coaching and, and training philosophy for the half marathon event. So thank you so much to the Patreon supporters for really making this channel possible. Thanks to title sponsor Hoka One One, keeping the dream alive. Uh, subscribe on here, like these videos if you like them. Thank you so much guys. Hope you're doing well and stay tuned for more via 2 Max Productions.